Ed Harrison here for Real Vision. I have the distinct pleasure of speaking to Azim Azar, who is a writer, technologist, and he's also the creator of the acclaimed Exponential View newsletter. Welcome to Real Vision, Azim. Thank you so much uh, for having me, Ed. I appreciate it. You know, I'm really excited to talk to you because you do have an upcoming book uh, called Exponential. We're going to get into that in a little bit. And this is part of a series of interviews that we're doing here at Real Vision on the exponential age. So you're exactly the right person to talk to who's been looking at this. You're looking at this from a number of different views. You know, I, I was saying that you are a a writer. You're also a technologist and a entrepreneur. Maybe you can give our audience a little bit of a background into your technology and and journalism uh, stakes. Yeah, well, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. In a way, I'm a child of the uh, the microprocessor revolution because I was born the year after the Intel 4004 processor was released, uh, which was uh, back in 71. And you know, I grew up with a computer in the home from the age of uh, nine. Uh, and so I still have that computer, uh, by the way, and it still works just about. So I was one of those lucky kids who just happened along at the right period of time, in the right place. I went to a junior school where there was one guy who bought us a com one teacher who bought a computer in one day and it stayed in the school. And when I got to university, um, I discovered the internet in about 1991. And that had me absolutely hooked. Uh, and so my journey, and I talk a little bit about this, has uh, uh, of my professional career has followed in a way the growth of the tech industry uh, with the process, microprocessor, personal computing, and then and then the internet. And the funny thing is that, you know, in those early days, nobody was really. Um, on the internet. I mean, I remember sending emails back and forth to the people who defined the mail protocol that everyone's emails run, runs over, SMTP, and then replying to me while I was a university student, because you just did. I, I emailed a, a guy called Mark Andreessen in 94 because there was a bug in a web browser he had uh, written and he replied to me really politely within 10 minutes. And of course, you, you don't know. You're just the lucky kid who's around at the same period of time. And, and that is where the bug for all of this, this bit me. Um, and, you know, in, and in those days, it was really primordial. And I don't think people can, can quite remember. But when I launched uh, the websites for the Guardian newspaper in 1996, I was physically the switch for the internet cable between our servers. So when the traffic got too heavy, I would physically disconnect a cable from one server and plug it into another server and I would reboot the other server. And in 20 minutes, I would do that again. And I sat in this equipment room doing this for the whole of the afternoon when load was too high. And that's what you had to do back then. And uh, I had a chance in the first couple of chapters of my book to reflect on how rapidly exponential technologies change and reflect on some of the funny experiences I had in my life. Wow, that is amazing. I think those are some great anecdotes. So, I mean, obviously you've seen the uh, exponential age, so to speak, uh, from the beginning of the internet to where we are today. I mean, I, I think technologists in general have been talking about exponential um, things happening for a long time. How different is what's going on right now uh, with uh, new technologies converging with crypto uh, in this space versus say the internet bubble? You know, I worked at Yahoo during the internet bubble. Right. Uh, you, I know that you uh, were in that space at the same time. Right. Uh, you know, how more exponential are we today? Is it just hype? Well, I, I you know, I think having lived through the uh, the dot com bubble like you did, and you know, investing at exactly the wrong time, uh, like uh, like many other people did, you know, I know the pain of of bubbles. Uh, you know, but I spent a lot of time trying to understand what's really going on here, and. There are there are a, a few reasons why things are different now, kind of fundamentally different. The first is that uh, the computer industry was a harbinger. It was a precedent for indus industrial technologies that are very general purpose that can improve at exponential rates. And it demonstrated to us what that exponential improvement does. What it does is it dramatically drives down prices. And as prices drive down,